Police officers make mistakes and they carry regret like anybody else. Looking back at my own 20 plus years of policing, there are certainly things that I wish I did differently. I've made countless mistakes. I'm a human being. We all do. If you've made a mistake, but there was no ill will behind it. So that means you weren't being vindictive. You weren't out to get somebody. You did it with good or pure intentions. Then people are generally pretty understanding about that and forgiving. But with this often comes our own personal regret. So why am I making this video anyways? I'm connected to a lot of police officers and other emergency services personnel. I have been my entire life, but also thousands of individuals interested in a career in policing or any emergency services, the up and comers. And I think that being open about the things that we wish we did differently can help others avoid the same mistakes and can help them grow, but also me grow. We can all grow. I come from a police family. I've mentioned this before. My dad was a police officer. My parents had five boys. Four of us became police officers. I spent over two decades of my life serving my community in uniform. And in that time, I saw a lot of things. I experienced a lot of highs, a lot of lows. I did my best to fulfill the duties of the job with good intentions. But like anyone in a long career, you sometimes look back and you wonder if you could have done things differently. And that's pretty much what I'm here to talk to you about, why I'm making this video right now. So growing up around cops again, I was exposed to a lot of stories. I hear, I heard a lot of stories. My dad uh, spent most of his career with the ETF, also known around North America as a SWAT team. So the stories that I heard were always, you know, very dynamic, very exciting, especially to a young boy. I keep in touch with some of them or I run into them at different functions and events and I make a point to have conversations. It's interesting to hear how the stories have changed, the, the tone in their stories have changed. I'm not going to share their personal stories. That's not up to me. That's up to them. But many of them are very open about some of their own regrets, especially when I ask them what advice they would give to newer police officers, younger officers, or those interested in pursuing a policing career. And some of the same guys who are always talking about busting through doors with battering rams. I mean, these real exciting stories, executing search warrants, the high priority or high stress incidents that they were involved with. When I ask them what they miss, they don't talk about those things anymore. Their tone has changed. They often talk about, they miss the simple moments in between those calls where maybe a family visiting from another country or city uh, stops and says hi to them when they're on the streets. Uh, their little kids want to say hi. They want to take a photo with them. They want to take a photo with the police officer, which is such a cute moment, obviously. Uh, being at a stoplight, looking over, and there's a family beside them, and the kids are waving at them. Those little moments, the kids get so excited that they get to say hi to a police officer. But that's what they miss, and I understand that. It doesn't have to be anything big. It's often the little moments. It's the simple interactions that stay with us, a nod or a wave, a smile, and in some circumstances, regrets. I absolutely regret some of the tickets that I gave out. And what's odd about this one is that it didn't take me years to realize this. I regretted issuing the ticket as soon as I handed it to the person and they drove off. Now, I've never given a ticket, obviously, to anyone for something they didn't do. They were always fair and justified. Years ago, we, there was a campaign going. It was a speeding campaign. And different officers on the shift were rotated to do traffic enforcement each day. Uh, on my day, I wrote 49 speeding tickets. It would have been 50, two books, but I made a mistake on one. And I don't regret any of one of those tickets that I gave out. I was set up in a 50 zone. There was lots of schools around. This was during the day. And I decided to only pull people for doing 20 or more over the posted speed limit. As soon as I gave one ticket, I'd set up with the laser in the exact same spot and pull somebody else over for the exact same offense. And I mean, listen, some were doing twice over the limit. This was, these were all justified, fair and justified. I do, however, regret giving a seatbelt ticket around the beginning of my career. It was also during a well-publicized seatbelt campaign. So everybody knew they were making announcements, media and everything else. I pulled a guy over, wasn't driving an expensive car or anything. I could tell by the way he was dressed that he worked in construction. He worked in the trades. Okay. As did I before becoming a police officer. 
he had a lunchbox beside him. And in my mind, you know, somebody made him his lunch trying to save money. There was a child seat in the back. Anyways, I gave him a ticket for not wearing a seatbelt. And you could tell that he wasn't impressed as he drove away. I mean, who would be impressed? Obviously, he just got a ticket. But to this day, I feel bad about that. That was probably a full day wage for somebody. I think a warning in this case would have been fine, and I'm sure he would have appreciated it. And perhaps police would have gained even more support that day. He would have been a strong, stronger supporter of police. I didn't break any rules. It was justified, but I still feel bad about it. I also regret an interaction I had with the kid. He was a bit of a known troublemaker. Very young still, though. You know, we think of people who are sometimes doing wrong, and we put ourselves in their shoes. And I think we come up with our own scenarios, how what we would do to fix things. It makes it easier for us to deal with in our own minds. But it also leads to judgment. Not everybody grew up in a perfect family dynamic, whatever that even means anymore. Not everybody had a strong support base. And this would certainly be one of those times. There was one young person in particular, <clears throat> I know his name and I won't mention it, but he was getting into way too much trouble for his age. He was a good kid, but for, and for some reason I related to him at that age. I have no clue why. He wasn't committing robberies or anything like that, no violence, but he was at an age where it could easily go either way and he clearly needed guidance. My last time that I dealt with him, I was like, you know, here we go again. My last conversation with him was rushed, rushed and it was abrupt. But what bugs me though is a couple weeks later after this conversation, he lost his life. Now police were not involved in any way directly or indirectly and I'm not going to get into any details. There's no need. But I was one of the officers who also attended the scene when this happened. To this day, I wish I took more time to speak to him. Uh, I knew he had a rough go from the beginning and they were certainly full of attitude, but I also wish that I took the time. That also affected how I dealt with others who may be in the same situation moving forward. Something more recent that bugs me, and it may seem small or insignificant, but it could have a long-term effect on those who are involved. I was in my police vehicle, stopped at a light. I don't know where my mind was. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was paying attention to, but I realized last minute, basically as the light turned green, that the car beside me and just kind of up a bit had a, some young kids in the backseat and they were all waving to me. The back windows were kind of tinted, but I could still see their little hands through the window. The light turned green and they went straight, but I was stuck. I was going to turn left and so I couldn't do it. They drove off just as I noticed that this was happening. There's kids parked beside me. I think the parents or the driver drove ahead a little bit. So then that way the kids could see the police officer and be beside and, and wave high. But it was almost like I ignored them on purpose. Like I didn't care to them. You know, it was too late when they drove away, but I'm telling you to this day, I should have put on my lights, went through the intersection, drove after them, pulled them over and chatted over something. God knows what, just so I don't, seem, you know, so like such a mean guy. Anyone with kids knows that even if you're the driver of a big yellow school bus, which is a very important job, by the way, thank you for what you do. But if the bus driver waves at some kids that are waving to them, the kids might talk about that for weeks, months even. You really, really make their day. And same with big trucks, train engineers, someone driving a tractor, a construction worker at a job site building or something. It's not a little thing. Kids waving is not a little thing, and it bothers me to this day. What can I say? If by chance you're watching this one day, I'm sorry, okay? Forgive me. Now, I'm making this video because I was with a gentleman recently. He was a police officer for over 35 years and already retired for close to 20 years. But our conversation, because of our conversation, it just reinforced what I'm talking about right now, that it's the little things that stay with you long after turning in the badge. I recently spoke at a law enforcement summit, which I was very proud to do. And I gave the same advice, which was given to me many years ago. And I've been given to new recruits. If you can, if time allows, or you're in the right headspace, instead of grabbing a coffee, driving through the drive through park the police vehicle and go inside. The opportunities for good old fashioned human interaction in a coffee shop is huge. There's always a group of 
you know, usually retired guys that seem to be there every single day, they're going to say the same joke you've probably heard a thousand times, but you laugh anyways because it's it's so innocent. There's families grabbing treats. Kids are going to want to say hi. They're going to wave to you. You might even hear a joke about a donut or a donut comment. So what? Lots of little moments are in that place. And I'm going to say this again. These moments are important for the public, but they're also important for the officer's own mental health, mind health. Thank you for watching this video and please share your thoughts if you're comfortable doing so. And until the next video, be safe out there, look after one another, and perhaps we will see you again.